I was at the Modern Art Museum, Museum of Art in, in New York. I'm afraid I don't remember which one, unfortunately. But it, I was in this amazing room. You know, it had all these priceless paintings from the, from the late Renaissance hanging in it. You know, each painting worth, who knows, a billion dollars maybe. They're priceless paintings. So the room was, it's a shrine. And it was full of people from all over the world who were looking at these paintings. You think, well, what the hell are these people doing coming to this room looking at these paintings? Like, what, are, what are they up to? One of them was a painting of the Assumption of Mary, right? Brilliantly composed. And there was all these people looking at it. And I thought, what are they doing? They don't know what that means. Like, why are they looking at that painting? Why is it in this room? Why does it cost a billion dollars? Why is that painting worth so much? And the answer to that is, well, we don't really know. Like, it happened. They're, they're sacred objects in some sense. And we gaze at them in ignorance and wonder. And the reason for that is that the unknown shines through them at us and in partially articulated form. And so... And that's the role of artists. You know? And real artists, real artists are contending with the unknown, right? And they're possessed by it. They have a personality trait, openness, that makes them do that. They can't even help it. And I've had lots of creative people in my clinical practice, and I can tell you the worst thing for creative people is to not be creative because they just die. And it, because it's, 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 it's like maybe you're a tree with a few major branches, you know? That's your personality. So if you're extroverted, man, you can't be cut off from people because you just wither. And if you're agreeable, you have to be in an intimate relationship or you die, you know? And if you're conscientious, man, and, you, and you're unemployed, you're just going to eat yourself up because you have to have a duty and you have to carry a load because you just can't stand it otherwise. And open people have to be creative. They have to be because otherwise they die. They don't have any vitality. And so they're cursed with the necessity of putting a foot out into the unknown and making sense of it. And then they're also cursed with the necessity of trying to make a living while they're doing that, which they can't because you can't. It's almost impossible to monetize creative, creative action, as many of you who are creative will no doubt find out. It's very, very frustrating. It's not that creative action is without value, right? Because the creative people are entrepreneurs and the creative people revitalize cities and the creative people make things magnificent and beautiful. You think about what's happened in Europe over the last thousand years, say 2,000 years, this amazing, unbelievable collaboration to make things so beautiful that they're, they're jaw-dropping when you walk into them. And you think about the economic value of that, right? I mean... I think it's, it's either France or Spain that's the most visited country in the world. It's one of those two. I think there's more tourists in France than there are people most of the time. And part of the reason for that is it's just so damn beautiful. You just can't stand it. And you think, what's the economic value of that? It's absolutely incalculable. And what's interesting, too, is that you build that beauty in, and then the farther away you get from it in time, the more valuable it becomes, right? Instead of decaying, it has exactly the opposite effect. Its value magnifies, and one of the things that I'm deeply ashamed of as a Canadian is that our sense of beauty is so underdeveloped, we're so primitive, it's not even primitive, that's the wrong word, because, you know, I don't know what it is, it's, it's, it's second rate, it's second rate at least, it's terror too, because people are afraid of beauty, but the idea that art is... The conservatives really have a problem with this in particular because conservative people tend not to be that creative. And it, it's a mystery, mystery by temperament. It, it's a mystery to me because they should be concerned with economic development and beauty is so unbelievably crucial to economic development that it just yells out at you, you know. So anyway, so that's what artists are doing. And so one of the things I would say is buy a damn piece of art, you know. Find one that really speaks to you and, and buy a piece of art because you invite that into your life and it's, it's a... Look out if you do it, if it's a real piece of art, because you'll also get a, you know, a little introduction to the artist, and then that'll seep into your life, and that'll change things like mad. But it's really, it's unbelievably worth it, because it, it opens your eyes to the domain of the transcendent. That's the right way of thinking about it. A real piece of art is a window into the transcendent. That's what it is. And you need that in your life, because you're finite and limited and bounded right, by your ignorance and your lack of knowing. And unless you can make a connection to the transcendent, then you don't have the strength to prevail. And that's part of the covenant. That's part of the covenant with God. And you can see that because you look at these magnificent cathedrals that our civilization built over the centuries. You know, some of those, 
they're still build, building this Sangrida Familia in, in, in uh, Barcelona, right? And it's an amazing building. I think it's going to take them like 300 years to build that. You know, people in the Middle Ages, they'd start building a cathedral and they think, ah, oh, we'll be done this in 300 years. You know, you imagine the vision that it took to invest in something like that. We, we look at quarterly reports. We can't think 300 years into the future to build something of that kind of remarkable, remarkable, what? Those cathedrals are so, they're, they're perfect. They're trees first, right? They're a forest, right? The Gothic cathedrals, they're, they're a forest. And the sun is shining through the branches. That's the stained glass. And they're the perfect balance of light and structure because they're representing something about the proper structure of being, which is something like the proper balance between light and structure. And, and they represent like the sacred tragedy of mankind. That's why they're in the shape of a cross. And they're open to the sky. That's why they have a dome. And they're full of gold so that it glitters because that's like the city of God, you know. And, and, and you, you can see that, that integral to, to our culture is the idea that beauty is one pathway towards God. And, it's, and, it's, and if you can't find another pathway, then why don't you use beauty? I'm sure most of you do that with music. Because music is the one thing that modern people can't be cynical about. Thank God for that. And I've been fascinated by music because of that. It, it speaks meaning to people, right? Even nihilistic punk rockers are so damn engaged with their music that they can hardly stand it. And you can knock on them and say, look, you know, you're having a transcendent religious experience. And they'll just tell you to fuck off because that's... <laughs> Because that's, that's what punk rockers have to do. But, <laughs> but that's still what's happening, you know. I mean, it's still what's happening. So, okay. So, okay. So I, I got into all that because I was talking about, about the Bible as literature, you know, and, 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 trying to, and trying to lay out. Because we, we need in our culture to justify the arts. And you have to, I don't want to do that by talking about high culture, talking about something abstract and evanescent. That's the wrong way to go about it. This is vital. You know, like one of the things that's really interesting about the University of Toronto is that the, the one side of the campus where we are is beautiful medieval cathedral. And the other side is god-awful factory. And, you know, and, and, that, and the thing is the attitude towards knowledge has paralleled that architectural transformation. You know, at one point, the humanities, let's say, were a sacred endeavor, and, and so was the art of being educated in the university, and that's turned into, like, mass factory, and that's reflected in the architecture. This isn't accidental. None of this happens, none of this happens by random chance, you know? It's not like there's a conspiracy or anything, because there isn't, but that doesn't mean that these things aren't tangled together, and the loss of beauty in the universities is a catastrophe, because without that beauty... There's no call to higher being. You know, you, this is also why you know, I've, I've mentioned to people that they should clean up their rooms. That's become quite the internet meme. But I'm really serious about it because it's really hard to do that. And I've been cleaning up my room, by the way, for about four months now because my life was thrown into such a catastrophe. And, and also we were renovating. And so, But it isn't just that you clean it up. You also make it beautiful. 